In this new AI world, we have seen the reality of it taking a lot of people's jobs. There have been some jobs that have been around for many years and all of a sudden they are slowly disappearing or pretty quickly. On the flip side of this though, we are seeing so many jobs that are being created thanks to AI. In this video, I'm gonna share with you not only these jobs that are being created, courses you can take to really get in on these jobs, but also too, we're going to look back and understand why some other jobs have been automated, hopefully learning from the past so we can really level up and focus on skills that will continue to be in demand. All right, let's get into it. All right, let's start with one of these jobs that has really been trending as of recent, and rightfully so. Let me give you a hint. Headlines across tech news recently have been for this job paying 335,000 US. Yes, you heard that right. Can you guess what it is? Prompt engineer. Now, this is a relatively new job. I mean, it's been around for quite some time, but new in the sense of the amount of demand for it. And what exactly does a prompt engineer do? Well, it's pretty much what it sounds like. You are creating prompts to interact with the AI. I mean, typically it would be an AI such as ChatGPT, Bard, where you are working on and construction, constructing the prompts to be made in the best way possible to get the best answer output, the most accurate answer for a very specific thing that you or your company are looking for. Now this sounds pretty like, oh, anyone could do that. That's pretty easy. But there are a lot of skill sets that are required as to why it is such a high paying job. The first one being subject matter expertise. When you are going in as a prompt engineer, you need to have expertise or at least quite a bit of experience for what you are working on. For example, are you if you are getting hired as a prompt engineer at a company that focuses on data, you should definitely have some experience working with data in the past. This will help your knowledge to construct the prompts in the best way possible. You really must have the ability or willingness to essentially solve puzzles. I've been looking at a lot of job postings for prompt engineers and critical and logical thinking is key. Being able to cipher through a lot of information and also to be cautious because sometimes what the AI is outputting, we can't necessarily take its direct word for it. So you need to sift through a lot of information as well. Now, I would say the most common way to become a prompt engineer is if you come from some sort of technical background or technical writing background. You don't need to come from necessarily a developer background in order to get this job, but I do think having a strong sense of machine learning and also to natural language processing is really essential to landing one of these higher paying levels prompt engineer jobs. Now, it brings us to the question which I've been getting asked a lot about is, is this job really here to stay or is it kind of a fad? And the reason people are questioning this is because AI is moving at such a fast race, fast race, fast pace, but there is the AI race going on as well, that prompt engineers might, in the future, not be needed. We might have AI as prompt engineers for other AI, if that makes sense. But I wouldn't worry about that at this moment. That's like looking into the future, which we don't know exactly. If this is a job that is of interest to you, there's a lot of potential to grow in it today. I will share some courses up on screen here that you can enroll in to really help set your resume apart when you are applying for these jobs. Next on the list for an in-demand job that has come out of the AI evolution is really Digital Protection Officer or DPO. As everything and businesses continue to go more digital, this role has continued to skyrocket. Every day, we're generating massive amounts of data and companies are leveraging this to gain data insights, improve services, and also drive growth. But with this rise in data, there's also been a significant increase in data breaches. This is where the role Data Protection Officer, DPO, comes in. A DPO is an enterprise security leadership role required by many companies. They oversee a company's data protection strategy and also its implementation to ensure compliance with these data protection regulations are met. Essentially, you can think of them as the ones who make sure companies are handling your personal data properly and securely. Put it that way and you can see why this is such an important role that's continuing to become more and more in demand. So many companies get under fire in the news and the media for maybe misusing our data, maybe, maybe I should take out maybe misusing our data, and this is what this officer is in charge of, ensuring that that does not happen. 
actually kind of an interesting stat here. There are fines when companies do breach this and use personal data in the wrong way for up to 4% of a company's global annual turnover, or it could be up to 20 million euros, which is even higher. And of course, not to mention these data breaches can really have an impact on companies' reputations and their user base. So as you can see, DPO is a very in-demand job and as more and more companies evolve with AI and AI gets a hold of people's data, this role will continue to grow in demand. Now, as much as it is, it's so fun to talk about jobs that have come out of AI and now are in demand where we can grow and evolve with, we also need to take a step back and learn from history what jobs have have become automated because of AI. And this can be an uncomfortable topic for many to really explore because we think about what it means for the impact on people's livelihoods. These are real people who have held these jobs and all of a sudden, because of AI, their jobs are taken. Now, this doesn't happen overnight. This is a very slow process. It's, it's one of those things where a little bit of each job starts becoming automated until the entire job is. So it's not as though it's something that someone flicks a switch and your job is gone. Now, there will definitely be that case in the future as AI continues to evolve and get smarter and smarter. But why I think it's so important to really look at some jobs that are slowly or now quickly becoming obsolete thanks to AI or because of AI is because it's a great way to learn from history. Learn, okay, why did these jobs become automated and what can I look out for in the future? So my role is not another one of the first to go. Now, one that I wanted to highlight, which I hope isn't too much of a surprise to you, is help desk staff. So this could be anything from secretaries to uh, people who work in doctor's offices to uh, customer care on the phones. A lot of these roles have become automated because of AI. Now, with these jobs becoming automated, it doesn't mean that people are completely out of jobs. What it means is as long as they were able or willing to continue to evolve and learn new skills. I mean, you literally, the, the internet is at your fingertips for many people, and there are so many incredible free learning resources on there, which is a huge benefit. I can see a lot of skill sets that people held in help desks getting translated into different areas around technology, even honestly one area where I think a lot of people that held this job might be really good in is prompt engineering. How come? Because they're very good with uh, getting specific answers out of people about appointments, collaborating with people, and also have to be very organized and structured. These are some skill sets that they could then take and apply to upskilling and leveling up their learning in order to get a job such as a prompt engineer. Now, I'm not saying it's as simple as one, two, three, but it's definitely something on the optimistic side to really take into consideration that this is possible and you can upskill. You just need to have the motivation or the desire to want to. The next job that is subject to get automated, which I feel honestly, I wasn't even sure if I was going to include it in this video initially because I know it's something that is such an important job. And, and when I say it's going to be automated, I'm not saying as a whole, but parts of it will be. And this is a job actually that I've held. It was my first job in tech, which is quality analyst engineer. And before you go, oh my gosh, Tiff, this is what I do. This is gonna be automated. Am I I'm gonna lose my job? No, I'm not saying that. But as we've already seen, this is a job that so much of the processes are being automated. Especially if you think about, uh, I remember when I started my first job, a lot of it was manual QA testing, if you can believe it. So it was literally taking these Android tablets and uh, testing if the software works. So, okay, if I click here and then here, what does this pattern do? So, so old school. And nowadays, of course, there are so many programs that do it for us. So this job is one that will be heavily impacted by AI, not taken over, but you will need to really keep up with the latest automation processes, be able to build different tests, to uh, test the different software. It will shift from more of a manual role into a very technical role that you have to be good with working with different systems or building them yourself. Now, for those of you who are already a QA or maybe you are looking to become one, it's still a great job to become. You just need to be aware of this. Uh, here are some courses that I would really recommend to level up your skills when it comes to everything quality assurance. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video, not only highlighting some new jobs that have come out of AI, and also too, it's really important to know that these are just a few jobs that have come out of AI as AI continues to evolve and grow, which as you know, is doing so at such a fast pace, more new jobs will continue to come up, which is really exciting for us.
Also too, I hope you enjoyed going through some of the jobs that are continuing to be automated by AI in hopes that we can better understand why, educate ourselves, and just prepare ourselves better for the future. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech, coding, and create career related videos. Leave in the comments other topics you want me to cover, questions you have. I do my absolute best to answer every single one of your questions. I am so thankful for this amazing community on here. And on that note, I need to go get coffee. Bye everyone.